So how can we protect our privacy online? Let's ask Jeremy Howard, who runs email hosting service Fastmail. Jeremy, good morning. When we good talk morning. about privacy on the internet, what should we be worried about? Well, I think one of the big issues actually is just education and apathy. Uh, it's an important topic for people to be aware of, and it's not always working the intuitive way. For instance, yesterday I actually asked my hairdresser, I said, what do you think is important in online privacy? Is it something you worry about? And she said to me, oh, I don't have to worry because I don't do online shopping. I don't use my credit card on the internet. It's an interesting issue because, in fact, the credit card is maybe the one thing that's really safe. The banks don't want you to know this, but in fact, if anybody else uses your credit card, you immediately can get a refund unless they can prove they've got your signature, your approval, and you've received the goods. So maybe some of the things you think are a problem aren't. Okay. But on the other hand, running a big email service, I see a lot of really big problems in areas like social networking, uh, in the browser, and certainly also in email. All right. Jeremy, let's start with, with sites like Facebook. How can we control what happens to the information that we put there? Well, look, always remember rule one of using the internet. Do you know rule one? Whatever you rule put one. there, just assume everyone's going to see. Would that be close? <laughs> Rule one, don't drink and type. <laughs> Good rule. So look, assuming you're sober while you're there on Facebook, I think it's still important to think about who's going to see this information sometime in the future. Uh, I know a lot of people, particularly in that kind of 16 to 24 age bracket, who put up stuff that I think in the future they might be sorry they put up. I, I know as an employer, one of the first things I do when I get a uh, resume come in is I take a look on the internet and see what I can find out about them, see what the real them looks like. So be aware that what you put on the internet is going to be seen by lots of people. Also be aware that sites like Facebook do give you privacy settings. Now by default, most stuff you put up there is available for everybody to look at. But you can turn that off by going into the privacy settings. All right, Jeremy, uh, let's talk about email. Why is that so vulnerable and how can we keep it secure? Look, the big issue with email is that it was designed 30 years ago for academic and military networks. It assumes trust. So, for instance, when you get an email that says it's come from President Obama, it could have come from anybody. It's just like sending somebody a letter and writing on the back in the sender section sent from President Obama. It, that's how secure it is, not secure at all. all right. so, so, just to answer your question about what can you do, the, all of the email companies and big senders at the moment are trying really hard to deal with this situation and in fact a really interesting company called True Domain in America has actually set up a new service where they're tracking all of the reputable senders and they're getting them to sign, electronically sign with mathematical algorithms their email. And in fact, quite serendipitously, uh, overnight Fastmail, which is my company, became the first company in the world to start allowing customers to use this service. So that's one kind of thing you could use to protect yourself. Yeah, sounds but like something we should all look into. Yeah, but I mean, regardless of whether, and I think all the email companies over time will start using this, regardless of whether yours does or not, just think about this. Before you click on a link, it's in an email, think carefully. Perhaps you don't want to do that. What would be much better would be to open up your web browser and type it in manually. That way you can be sure that somebody hasn't actually hidden something in that link or in that attachment. Even if it looks like it's come from a friend, um, tricky viruses pretend to come from your friends by using their address books, for instance. Uh, Jeremy, good tips. We'll try and remember all of those. Thanks for your time this morning, Jeremy. Thank you. And